What is up everybody? We're actually not going to start this video with any discussion about our emerging tripolar nuclear world, but instead with problems in mathematics that don't generalize in the way you would expect as the size of your problem increases. When we learn mathematics, we learn a lot about how it's the study of patterns and how some pattern generalizes from n equals 1 to n equals 2 to n equals 3 and so on and so on. Now, this works in many, many, probably the majority of cases. In one dimension, we can talk about line segments of length n. In two dimensions, if we take two line segments of length n, we can connect them together to get a square of area n squared. The squared, because we're here in two dimensions. We look at three dimensions, we can take two squares, both of area n squared, and connect them together in order to get a cube in three dimensions of volume n cubed, the three in the exponent here because we're in three dimensions and we can just go on and on and on. This extends very neatly and shows us this pattern that's emerged in mathematics. Now, every once in a while, you get a problem in mathematics that you would fully expect to generalize and don't really see a good reason for why it wouldn't, but it does not. And the biggest example I can think of is the random walk problem. A random walk is basically you can imagine just somebody who's taking a unit step forward or a unit step backward and they're doing it at random and they do it over and over and over and over again. That's a random walk on a one dimensional line. Now we can prove mathematically that if the random walker starts at the origin in one dimension and as we said they either go forward or back one unit and they do that infinitely for infinite time we can say with 100% certainty, with probability 1, that random walker will return to the origin. They'll return to their starting point. Now we can extend this problem to two dimensions. You can imagine a random walker who's not able to just move back and forth, but also left and right. And they do that with, again, equal probability of any of the four directions. And they just take one step at a time, and we just let them do that infinitely. We can show again, we can prove that there's a 100% chance, a probability 1, that the random walker will return to the origin, return to their starting point. Now, given our finding for n equals 1, given our finding for n equals 2, what would you say for n equals 3? I would just say that it continues. If you told me now you have, I guess it's a random walking, flying bird, actually, who's able to go forward and back, left and right, and up and down, again, one unit each, completely at random and does this forever, I would say there's also a 100% chance that given enough time, they return to the origin, return to their starting point. Actually, it's only 34%. There's only a 34% chance that this random bird returns to their starting point. Even though in one dimension, there's a 100% chance, in two dimensions, there's a 100% chance, this crazy unexpected thing happens in three dimensions where the probability is not 100% or even close to 100% for that matter. And that's where we transition into talking about nuclear politics and our emerging tripolar nuclear world. Because the name tripolar indicates that there's going to be three powers in this emerging nuclear world. The United States, Russia, and China. And as the story we just told, unexpected things are going to happen when you move from this bipolar nuclear world to a tripolar nuclear world that we're not necessarily going to expect. But to start talking about all that, we actually have to take a step back and talk about a unipolar nuclear world. Assume that there's just one superpower, one nation, who has nuclear weapons. And we ask ourselves, what is a stable configuration in the number of nuclear weapons this country has? Stable meaning that if they had this number, there would be no reason for them to have any more nuclear weapons or any fewer nuclear weapons. Now, in reality, in the real world, there's so many phenomena, so many factors going on. And so we are going to simplify this problem a little bit. And we're going to say that beyond a certain baseline number of nuclear weapons to which the country is able to defend itself and deter any attacks against itself, there's no reason for it to have any more because there's no adversaries who are also stockpiling nuclear weapons where they're trying to catch up to. There's no reason to have any less because this is the minimum amount they need in order to deter any attacks. So this baseline number of nuclear weapons is the stable state here. And so there is a stable state in this situation. 
Now let's go from the n equals 1 case to the n equals 2 case, which we've lived in for a really long time, where there's not just one country that has nuclear capabilities, but two in our world, the United States and Russia. Now what's a stable configuration look like here? To start answering that question, we can run through a thought exercise. Let's say the United States has 100 nuclear weapons and Russia has 150 nuclear weapons. Would this be a stable configuration? Would neither country want any more or less nuclear weapons? Well, probably not. And for this, we can appeal to a term in nuclear politics called parity, where both countries have about the same number of nuclear weapons. Given the concept of parity, and remembering that we're living in this kind of simplified universe for the sake of this video, this would not be a stable state. The United States would want 50 more nuclear weapons in order to match Russia. And so we can still talk about stable states. Stable situations still exist in a bipolar nuclear world. It's just that both of the nuclear superpowers need an equal number of nuclear weapons and any of those configurations would be stable states. So for n equals one, we know a stable configuration exists. For n equals two, we know a stable configuration exists. And so naively just extending this, we can say that if we lived in a tripolar nuclear world where we have three nuclear superpowers, a stable configuration should also exist, right? Well, let's kind of think about it a little bit. Right now, the country with the third most nuclear weapons is China, and its arsenal is growing, according to Pentagon reports. So how would you feel if you're in the point of view of China right now? How many nuclear weapons would you want in order to have a stable state, according to you? Well, you would want to have enough nuclear weapons such that your combined arsenal is equal to the sum number of nuclear weapons as the other two nuclear superpowers. And the reason is that if those two nuclear powers were to decide to team up, combine their arsenals, and launch a systematic attack on you, you would want enough weapons in order to survive and to deter that attack in the first place. To say that, don't attack me, because I have an equal number of nuclear weapons as both of you combined, and therefore there's no reason for you to attack me. I'm going to deter even the possibility of that attack. So if you're China, you want to have a number of nuclear weapons that's equal to the sum of the US's number of nuclear weapons and Russia's number of nuclear weapons. Now, if you're the United States, you're thinking in the exact same way. You wanna have a number of nuclear weapons that's the sum of Russia's number of nuclear weapons and China's number of nuclear weapons. If you're Russia, you're thinking in the same way. You want a number of nuclear weapons that's the sum of the US's and China's number of nuclear weapons. Now, given each of these three countries wants that, can we ever have a stable configuration? Well, we think about it for a second, we can approach it from a mathematical side too if we want a little bit more clarity, but the answer is no. The only solution to these three constraints where each country wants a number of nuclear weapons that's the sum of the nuclear weapons of the other two countries is that if all countries have zero weapons. If this is still a little bit hard to see, we can just do a toy situation. Assume that all three countries just have 100 nuclear weapons. So they have an equal number of nuclear weapons each. But again, each one's not trying to defend against just one adversary, but the possibility of both their adversaries teaming up. So if I'm the United States, I'm saying together, my adversaries have 200, I only have 100. I better go ahead and boost my arsenal up to 200. So now the United States has 200 weapons, but now Russia's looking at that and saying, well, my adversaries have 300 combined. Let me boost my arsenal up to 300. And this just goes on and on and on and on to which there is not a stable configuration of number of nuclear weapons in a tripolar world unless we just get rid of nuclear weapons altogether. And this is a bit of a scary and kind of sobering thought where if we lived in a bipolar nuclear world, which you can argue we still do today by looking at the number of active nuclear weapons, there's still a massive discrepancy between Russia and United States, who have about the same. There's a massive discrepancy between that level and the third biggest country, China. But if we're accepting that we are going to end up living in a tripolar nuclear world, we have to accept this possibility and probability that there is not going to be a stable state. The solution we saw in n equals one and n equals two just does not hold for n equals three. It does not generalize in the way we might have expected. Now, as I've said a couple times in this video, the real world is complex. It's not just a simple calculation of adding up the number of weapons that all the other countries have and trying to reach that level. There's a lot more nuanced politics going on here. But 
appealing to just the concept of nuclear parity alone and seeing what has happened over the years and how these two superpowers are pretty much at parity right now and extrapolating that to what might happen in the future with three nuclear superpowers, it might be getting harder and harder and harder for us to live in a non-nuclear weapon world and more and more and more likely for us to spiral into increasingly large nuclear stockpiles for a tripolar, quadpolar, quintpolar nuclear world. So I would love to hear your comments. There's not really a conclusion to this video. I just wanted to put this idea out there and see what you all think. Happy to read the comments below. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see everybody next time.